Okay, so uh, I'd like to thank uh, Yoram who disappeared and uh, Moshe for the excuse to come back here. Uh, as many of you know and as uh, many of the previous speakers, I've been uh, uh, a student here, both undergraduate and graduate, and uh, many of the faces that uh, I remember from back then are here in the audience. Um, which reminded me while I was preparing this talk, I, remind, I actually remember the first talk I ever gave in a, in a conference or in a workshop. Uh, and this work took place not far from here in a place called Hotel Ramat Aviv, which I don't know if it exists anymore. But that was, uh, uh, since I, every student was given like 20 minutes to give a talk, and uh, I was very nervous and I, you know, I learned my talk by heart, and uh, Mark Asbel, who was uh, mentioned here before, was the chairperson of that session. And uh, so I got up, I put the transparencies, it tells you how old I am, it was a transparency projector. I put the first transparency, I said, the thing I learned by heart, I'm going to talk today about this and that, and Mark Asbel got up and said, your time is up. <laughs> And there was like a 10 minutes discussion whether the time was up or not. And then uh, it, there was a, some compromise. He gave me another three minutes to finish my talk. So I gave the 20 minutes talk in three minutes. Um, I'm sure that Ora will be more Hi. generous. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, uh, I remember the you remember the talk? Because there were in Brooks Harris as your collaborators, and you say that you did the thing you work with two of your students. No, no, no. I never dared. <laughs> Even now, I don't dare doing this. Um, anyway, so um, uh, I changed slightly the, the title of, uh, of the talk. Originally, I was going to talk about uh, edge reconstruction and uh, uh, spontaneous time reversal symmetry breaking in uh, topological insulators, <laughs> but I had the... Uh, written a very long introduction uh, about uh, uh, edge reconstruction in, in the quantum Hall regime, so I decided that I'll maybe spend some time about the history and maybe the, um, uh, the um, uh, motivation coming, uh, why, why we started working on, on the quantum Hall regime and how this thing extends to uh, topological insulator. I should also point out in this context that uh, uh, the Chinese connection, uh, this work that I'm going to describe today was carried out mainly by a, a, a very talented uh, Chinese uh, postdoc, Zhang Hui Wang, who is currently back in, uh, um, in Beijing and with Yuval Geffen. Okay, so uh, uh, the, the part that uh, on the quantum wall effect was already published uh, a couple of years ago, and the uh, part about topological insulators uh, has not been published yet. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, edge reconstruction and the physics behind edge reconstruction. There's no clock here. Um, uh, so I'll start with the functional quantum Hall effect, talk about the motivation, the experimental motivation, and then uh, go back in history uh, quite a number of years, tell you about uh, what, what we've done, and then uh, go back to the topological insulator. So the motivation, this, this is some short, uh, small overlap with Yuval's talk from a couple of days ago, yesterday actually. Uh, so there were uh, three experimental observations that uh, we've, uh, for multi high basically from uh, the two-third regime, uh, which uh, were mentioned uh, before. The one of them is a very old observation. Uh, I think it was first seen in Albert Chang's uh, group, that as you, uh, if your system in the bulk is two-third, and then you have uh, uh, some point contact, you get a plateau at one-third. And this was recently re-observed by uh, in, in Moti Hybrum's group. Uh, the other thing that was uh, observed uh, in Moti Hybrum's group was the fact that you can actually estimate the effective charge by looking at short noise. And uh, if you use the same procedure that Moti is using to deduce the, electric, the effective charge, 
uh, the discharge actually crosses over from being one third at high temperature to being two thirds at low temperature. And the last observation was the observation of neutral modes. So you inject current here, uh, the charge actually goes to this ground, but actually you see enhanced noise in this quantum point contact, which was uh, um, inter interpreted as a, as a heat uh, mode going in the opposite direction uh, or a neutral charge. And this such observation was also um, uh, verified in experiments in Amir Jacobi's group, for example. So uh, the old, uh, so going back to uh, the old literature, if you look at the edge structure of the two-third uh, filling factor, um, uh, there are a bunch of works uh, uh, by Albert Chang, Carlo Benaker, and then Sklovsky, Sklovsky, and Glasman that says basically that uh, the density goes to down to uh, uh, to zero smoothly, and there are uh, places where you have a gap, you can get a nucleation of a, uh, of a lower um, a filling factor. So you can, in this system, if you associate a drop in density with, a, uh, with an uh, uh, edge state, then you'll have two edge states, each carrying a one-third um, uh, charge, and uh, this is a picture from Carlos' paper, then you uh, clearly explain observation one. If you have a point contact here, then one of the edge states can propagate and one of the edge states can uh, be reflected, so you'll have a plateau at one third, but of course this cannot explain the crossover in the charge and, not, and, and, the, neutral, and the neutral mode. Uh, later, or even before that, uh, an, uh, another candidate or an, a candidate for the um, ground state at uh, a new equal two third was proposed by uh, Steve Gervin and by Ellen McDonald later. And basically, what they said is that we can think of the two, th two thirds uh, ground state as a, a one third holes in the background of a full Landau level. So if you look at the density, this is the density of the full Landau level, and on top of that you have uh, one-third holes, so the density should actually go from two-thirds to one to zero, and again, if you associate an edge state with a change in density, then there will be one-third in the opposite direction, and one, then uh, charge one going in this direction, downstream, and uh, this uh, uh, schematics show those two edge states, but those edge states actually uh, are in contradiction to experiment because you expect that if you have a source here, it will fill both the one-third edge state go in the upper channel, in the upper edge, the one uh, mode, edge mode in the uh, lower edge. So altogether, we'll have a conductance of four-thirds, which was never seen. And then uh, came this uh, paper by uh, Ken P Fisher and Polchinski, which claim, which basically said that due to interaction disorder, there will be a renormalization of these two edge states into one charged state of uh, two thirds going in this direction and one neutral edge, edge going in the opposite direction. And uh, uh, this explains why you see a neutral mode, but cannot explain the plateau and cannot explain the crossover in the effective charge. Uh, I should say that there was a later work by uh, Sassetti's group, which includes some additional operator, which does attempt to explain the, cro the charge crossover. Okay, so now uh, looking at that, of course, um, uh, you go, tells you again that uh, uh, how old I am. I mean, you go back in history and you remember things you've done many, many years ago. And this thing is related to what is, uh, has been called edge reconstruction. So in 94, there were these two papers, both of them uh, uh, discussed this uh, phenomena. And the idea is very simple. Let's say that uh, uh, this is the, you have in the new equal one quantum hole regime. Uh, so you basically have all the Landau level states filled up to some K vector up to some level, and uh, that depends on basically where the edge of the system is. However, the system actually is defined by some edge potential. <coughs> so let's say that uh, this edge potential, uh, you will to solve some classical Poisson equation, <coughs> and the uh, uh, electron liquid in this edge potential would like to have this form. 
So if, this is, if the electrons were a classical liquid, that's the way the, uh, the density of the electrons would drop to zero near the edge. However, since we are in a quantum system, the electron has to come up with this density. Remember that the, this density is fixed, is determined by the Coulomb interaction, which is the largest energy scale in the problem. So the electron has to come up with, uh, to like to emulate this density as much as possible, giving the electronic states that they can occupy. Now in the, low, in the, Landau, in the lowest Landau level, the only state they can occupy is basically the Landau, first Landau level states. And if you assume that they can either occupy or not occupy these states to get a reduced density, the only way you can get a reduced density is by occupying not every state, but maybe every second or every third state. So you'll get a bunch of electrons which are uh, basically uh, not uh, in contact with the rest of the density. So on average in this regime, the density is lower than what you uh, will get from, uh, from the bulk. In other words, let's say that uh, uh, because of the Coulomb interactions, electrons want to be as far from each other as possible. Okay? But if you have a confining potential, if they go far, they have to pay a lot of potential energy. So the question how far they go depends on how steep the potential is. <laughs> if the potential is not too steep, then the electrons actually can move away from the bulk of the electrons and uh, uh, reduce their energy. And the reason they form basically a continuous um, uh, density is because of the exchange they want to be next to each other uh, that reduces the, the uh, Coulomb interaction. And uh, uh, so this is basically a result of a Hartree 4 calculation done by Shamon and Wen. And if you do a full uh, diagonalization, you get something which is smoother, but still you get a, a reduction in the density and then an increase in the density. The same calculation, if you do for the two-third case, you get again a, a bulk, uh, basically a strip of electrons uh, detached from the main density. Uh, but here, because of the uh, uh, correlations, you can have a lower density also by having uh, uh, this strip at one-third, at filling factor one-third. So if you basically associate again um, um, edge state with each change of density, you'll get one third upstream, uh, then one downstream, one third upstream, one downstream. So now you add up with additional edge state, both in the integer or the fractional quantum world regime. And such a complicated edge structure was actually observed uh, experimentally. This is, for example, from, uh, I think, Amir's uh, data uh, group. There is a bunch of uh, papers by other groups as well. Okay, so uh, the calculation that uh, we've done in order to understand the, um, uh, the experiment was basically some kind of an RG calculation where uh, you uh, divide the edge states into two groups. Those two, th those edge states, the one, the minus one third and the plus one third are always together very close to each other. While this outer edge state is always farther apart depending on how, stu how uh, smooth the potential is. So if you do a two-step renormalization group, first for the uh, uh, inner edge states, and then for the out, so if you do first the inner edge states, and this is a calculation that was done in, uh, very close to a calculation that was done by uh, Joel Moore and Shogun Wen, what you see is that this inner edge states renormalize to one-third going in this direction, and two no, uh, neutral modes going in the opposite direction. Uh, and uh, as you lower the temperature, since the interaction and scattering between these two edges is relevant, you get uh, 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 the standard uh, uh, kane fischer polchinski uh, edge state. So that means that in the, this higher regime, you get, uh, very, uh, you get uh, the, uh, what you expect, the, plateau in the conductance because of the separation between these two edges. You get, uh, uh, and you get the uh, um, uh, crossover in the effective charge and you get the neutral mode. So this explains uh, the experimental observation and more of the, and even more, there are quite, there, there is a number of uh, experimental observations by Moti's group 
uh, that uh, predict, that uh, supports that uh, picture even further. First is the fact that if you uh, look at two point contacts in, in series, then the behavior of this point contact depends on the distance to the first point contact. If you have a, a two point contacts at a short distance, then as long as this point contact has a transmission of larger than one half, there will be an edge state that is transmitted here. And then, independent of, of this opening, the conductance here will be one half because this edge state can go into here as long as the transmission here is more than one half. So the transmission here is independent of how uh, open this point of contact here as long as it's more than one half. On the other hand, if you take a long uh, distance between the two QPCs, this is a different sample, what you see is that you, uh, the conductance here suddenly depends uh, on, the, on, the, on the opening. Uh, and if you believe this picture, basically you say that uh, over this long distance, this thing already renormalized to two thirds, and then uh, uh, the conductance here will depend on the transmission through this, uh, um, through this opening. Additionally, what uh, Moti is seen is the following. You uh, open the point contact, and what you see is that there is a plateau, as I said before, a, a conductance plateau at one half, which means that uh, one third is transmitted and that one third is, uh, is reflected. If you measure the noise or the neutral mode, what you see is that when, the trans when, the, uh, when the, uh, you open and you reflect uh, one half, the one third uh, um, uh, mode, you reduce the noise uh, the, almost to zero. And the reason is that if you look at this picture, the normal, the neutral mode is only associated with the inner one third mode. And the outer third mode, there's no normal mode with it. So it doesn't carry any heating with it. Okay, so this was the, basically the introduction uh, to the uh, quantum Hall effect. I want to uh, switch to the, uh, what happens when you have, when you're in the, for a, a topological insulator, or quantum spin Hall effect. And the simplest model, the, uh, uh, um, busy model was basically introduced as one of the models for topological insulators and basically just a uh, um, effective model if you put uh, zinc plant supercon semiconductors under strain you end up with uh, after some, some manipulations with two quantum hole effects one quantum hole effect for new equal one for spin up and one quantum hole effect with new equal minus one for spin down so if you basically and uh, because you have time reverse asymmetry, then basically you will have two edge states spin up, say, let's say the blue is spin up, spin up going in one direction, spin down going in the, uh, down in the opposite direction. Now, since this is a quantum hole effect, basically quantum hole physics, then you expect the same physics to come in. So what we've done, and okay, before I go to that, let me just mention, that uh, even if this model is not directly relevant to uh, uh, topological in the current topological insulator that people have looked at, it's certainly relevant to, uh, let's say, uh, graphene. Uh, in the zero Landau level, for example, you expect uh, uh, electrons and holes to coexist at the Fermi energy, and of course, uh, then you have two quantum holes uh, with opposite uh, spins and opposite directions. And similarly, if you have a bilayer graphene and you put an electric field uh, between them, like uh, Amir Jacobi's group does, then uh, you can get uh, uh, electrons in one, one layer and holes in the other layer. Okay, so let me show you the results for this uh, busy model. Uh, and first I'll mention uh, results within the RT4 calculation. So if you have an edge, so the, the basically this, uh, I don't know, greenish, orangish uh, color denotes the distribution of the uh, uh, positive charge that the electrons try to emulate. If you have a sharp edge, then the density of the electrons, both for spin up and spin down, falls to zero to, uh, together. And you have uh, just a pair of edge states, uh, which are this, 
in the same uh, position in space. Now you make the potential smoother and smoother. Eventually, the electrons realize that they want to have a, a smooth drop in, the, in their density. And the simplest way to do it is basically to separate the position where, let's say, spin up drops to zero and where spin down drops to zero. Okay, it's like nu equal two. If you have nu equal two, if you have a sharp edge, then both Landau levels will fall to zero together. If you have a smoother edge, then you can have the first Landau level, the second Landau level drop, and then the first Landau level dropping. And uh, if you even make a, 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 a even smoother edge, then each spin direction will have this Shaman Wen type uh, reconstruction that I mentioned before. But what's important is that in both of this regime, you have a spontaneous breaking of time reverse asymmetry. The spin up and spin down are no longer, uh, edge modes are no longer in the same position of space. Okay? And let me just mention that you can, uh, this was the result of a Hartree 4 calculation. You can do exact diagonalization of the system and you see a, a sharp drop, a simultaneous drop of spin up and spin down uh, uh, near the edge. But if you look at the smoother potential, the, let's say the down spin goes down first and then the up spin goes down later. And of course there are two equivalent solution and the system, system spontaneously chooses one of them. Okay, so let me just mention what could be the experimental implication of such a, a, bro a spontaneously broken symmetry. Uh, the first is that once you allow time reverse asymmetry breaking, you no longer exclude backscattering between the edges. So that means that you could, this could be a mechanism for having a higher resistance in the sample. So the plateau that people observe experimentally is not actually at the, what the, the, the uh, predicted value is, is actually at higher resistance. And this is, could be, a, uh, this was a big puzzle, what, what was the source of this higher resistance. This suggests a possible uh, uh, mechanism. And in fact, the fact that experimentally they see higher resistance only for larger system may uh, even uh, uh, support such a scenario. More interestingly, you can get, if you have a separation or in, uh, um, if, uh, of the spin up and spin down uh, edge state, you can uh, tune the point contact to transmit one and not transmit the other. And this means that if you now uh, have a, a source here, you see the, or a source here, you see that this guy goes through and this guy does not, so you, you have a quantum Hall effect at zero magnetic field. And in fact, if you calculate the quantum hole resistance, you get one third. This if you have a perfect transmission for one and full reflection of the other. If you uh, uh, have a partial reflection or different reflection of one or the other, you can get any value. Uh, actually, it's between minus one third and plus one third because uh, it depends which direction you break the symmetry. Yes, what? Uh, it depends which direction uh, you break the symmetry, and this will determine what the sign of the whole conductance is. <coughs> Moreover, if you, if you look at this picture, you see that, for example, if you transmit the, uh, the red and not the blue, then you see that you necessarily have spin. So you generate a quantum, uh, uh, you generate a spin current, again, at zero magnetic field. Uh, an interesting scenario could be what happens when you have two QPCs in series. You can imagine the situation because the choice which, how you break the time reverse asymmetry, which spin is out and which spin is in, is arbitrary. They are both generate. So you could imagine that, for example, this side of the sample breaks the symmetry one way, and this, type, uh, this part of the system broke the symmetry in a different way. That means that these guys have to cross each other. So there, what will happen, you can get a situation where each quantum point contact is transmitting one channel, but the two guys in series have zero transmission. Another interesting prediction of this calculation. Okay, so uh, the busy model was a simple model that was constructed as a, as a kind of a toy model to give rise to topological insulators. But uh, uh, basically, the only observation 
optological insulators are in uh, mercury telluride, and those are more uh, faithfully described by a model which is called the BHZ model. So basically, we've uh, done uh, Hartree Fock calculation for the BHZ model uh, in the presence of external potential and electron electron interaction. The model is much more complicated. So here is an example of what the, the results of the model where we have a sharp edge. So this is the spectrum, and this is the chemical potential. And what you see is that the chemical potential crosses the spectrum. Let's say this is the spectrum for spin up electrons at two points. So there are two modes, one on each edge. So for each spin, there is one mode on each edge. So on, if you concentrate on a single edge, then you have two modes. One going in, in each direction, each for a different spin. Now, what, when you basically take the, the confining potential and make it smoother, what happens is that these guys go down and eventually cross the Fermi energy. So now, if you this is a blow up of, of this region. So now, if you look, for example, at the, um, at the spectrum for spin up, you see that there, there are one, two, three, four edge states or edge modes. Three on one edge and one on the other edge. So what you see if you look at the uh, uh, spatial dependence of the edge modes, if you look at one edge, you see the original pair of spin up going in one direction and spin down going in the opposite direction. But in addition to that, you get two spin, two edge modes going in opposite direction, but of the same spin. So again, you break time reverse asymmetry spontaneously. And you get, uh, uh, so s most of the prediction we, uh, I mentioned for the busy model also apply here. OK, so uh, I'll basically just mention the main results that in the, uh, um, in the uh, functional quantum hole case, uh, there are this reconstruction uh, not only explained uh, uh, the data, but actually uh, uh, basically agrees. I mean, new, new measurements actually uh, also support this. And uh, there were various new observations uh, that were predicted. And uh, I think Yuval also mentioned some of these in his talk. In, I concentrated here on the quantum uh, uh, spin hole effect where, uh, as I said, uh, you get spontaneous time reverse asymmetry breaking. Uh, it's explained the backscattering. And there were very uh, stark uh, experimental setups that are, can be used to uh, um, test uh, this prediction. Uh, just to mention last point, uh, there were a lot of work, especially in Weizmann, about fractional topological insulators. So one may ask what happens, whether you have edge reconstruction in fractional quantum hole, in fractional topological insulator. For example, do you have neutral modes or not? And uh, how will they affect the predictions that made in, uh, are made in, in this bunch of papers by Adi and collaborators? OK, I think I'll finish here. Well, you know the answer. Uh, it, it, it may be worthwhile to mention that they, unlike other uh, models, other proposals uh, for backscattering uh, in topological insulator, which uh, uh, scale with temperature, this, uh, this mechanism is a ground state uh, mechanism. So it will apply also at zero temperature. Only. Oh. Only. Okay. Uh, I have a question and a, a comment. Uh, so the, the question is, uh, uh, is a small confining potential, does a, so a small confining potential in the case of the topological insulator has the same effect on the edge mode as in the quantum world? Case? Because in graphene, for example, doesn't, so, can, can you speak up? So, I if I ask. I'm asking if a, confine, a small confining potential. But the, what I showed you is a real calculation. 
So there are two calculations. One, so there are two models we looked at. One is the busy model, yeah. which is just two quantum hole with uh, opposite magnetic field for the two spins. Mm -hmm. And there you get, in addition to... Okay, but that's by hand. Uh, no, no, that's a model that, you know, it's a model for a specific system, I mean, for a family of systems, uh, uh, zinc blend semiconductors under strain, okay? So that if you take this model, I mean, this is the busy uh, paper. You take this model, you put strain, you end up with an effective Hamiltonian that looks exactly like Lelanda with Hamiltonian, except that it has time reverse asymmetry, so it's opposite for the two spins. But the effective magnetic field is something that has to do with the, uh, with the strain. The other calculation that I showed is the B8Z model, which is considered now the most reliable model for uh, mercury telluride. And uh, that's for the bulk, but uh, do you have know, the information about what happens? Uh, so basically, we took the same model, mm -hmm. which is just, just, I mean, which you can map into a tight binding model, mm -hmm. and you put uh, in addition to the standard. <laughs> Um, poten uh, potential that people use for the BZ model, you put an external potential. And I showed you what the results were. Okay, now the, the comment is, I think it's not the first time I'm mentioning it to you, uh, this uh, quantum hole, spin hole in the graphene is uh, recovered. First, it's an interaction plus the phase. You see it uh, above 20 Tesla, so... Yes. I, I'm not sure I... I so, the, the quantum spin hole state in graphene, in the quantum hole regime... I didn't talk about quantum spin hole effect in graphene. The I just said that in, in, in graphene, trivially, you get uh, hole, holes and electrons at the Fermi energy. Yes, but... Uh, That's all I said. So, if you apply a magnetic field, you get something that should look like... Uh, it doesn't, you know, but in, order, in order to, to realize this state, you need to put a very strong magnetic field and it's already ferromagnetic, so there's no spontaneous... Uh, no, in this case, of course. I mean, this was in strong magnetic field. You need to be in the Landau level, a real magnetic field to, be, to generate real Landau levels. Yeah. Not so only Landau levels. You need very, very, very strong magnetic to stabilize the thermodynamic bulk, and only then you have something there. Yeah, well, in, in graphene, there are other degeneracies that you have to get rid of. Yeah, I agree with that. Adi? Iran? Adi? Okay. Uh, the, the spontaneous time reversal symmetry breaking, is the, uh, can the criterion for this be expressed in terms of the large liquid parameter uh, for, the edge, for, the, for the edges? Hmm? So the interaction should be uh, stronger than some uh, But you need long range interaction. I need? Long range interaction. Uh, it doesn't help with the long range, but I don't think it's Okay, I mean, I mean, the way we've done it, we fix the, the interaction and we change, just change the slope of the potential. So there were two critical slopes that, uh, I mean, there were two, in the busy model, there were two, two transitions. One is the spin polarization, and the other is real reconstruction within each spin species. Uh, this depends on, uh, I mean, there are two energy scales, right? The, the interaction and the quantum potential. And the quantum potential uh, determines the velocity. Yeah, so, I mean, you can express the ratio of two energies by any ratio that you want. Uh, yeah, but, but you didn't check it. Uh, no. Because there, there were calculations within Latin liquid model, I think of George Moore and some other people, uh, and they had, had the critical value for the Latin liquid parameter of one quarter of I don't think there is there any magical, uh, you know, universal number for that. I, uh, probably, I mean, I think our impression it, it depends on. Uh, I mean, if you take the potential, I mean, the, we took potential that looks like that. Mm -hmm. We take potential that looks like that. 
I mean, the Latin GR always look what exactly happens at the, yes. the Fermi energy, and when you have interactions, maybe you know you have uh, higher energies in the, involved in the problem. We didn't look it, at this in terms of Latin GR liquid, but it could be interesting. Stefan? I have exactly the same question. Okay. Any more questions or comments? So we thank the two speakers.